Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at the meninges and ventric ventricles, the hindbrain, basal ganglia and the limbic system, all as a part of the central nervous system, as opposed to the peripheral nervous system, which we looked at last video. Okay, so the meninges and the ventricles. Um, the meninges are basically the protective layers of the brain. So we've got, we've got our brain uh, like that, We've got all the little bits that go inside it, okay? And outside, we've got a few protective layers, okay? The outer one is called Jira, it's the toughest, and then we've got Arachnoid, and then the Pia. Arachnoid, arachnoid you might recognize from Arachnoid Cyst, and this is what happens when a bunch of uh, fluids fill up between the two membranes and create this cyst inside. Now, the ventricles are the spaces between the parts of the brain. So if we've got the brain, we've got all these kind of cavities, and when we split it in half um, this way, down the middle, we become aware that there is actually a lot of kind of, if we look at it like an x-ray, there's a lot of them throughout the middle section, mostly, around the sides. They're all filled with cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, that kind of uh, has a lot of purposes for um, for different cells like glial cells, but we'll, and neurons. We'll look at that later. But the point is, it, again, it protects the brain. It creates uh, uh, another protective aspect to uh, you know within the skull, and it drains down to the spinal cord. Okay, and same with the ventricles. Um, a lot of problems are seen when there is um, not enough fluid or basically any every time there's a problem uh, like like hydrocephaly uh, hydro there's a thing called hydrocephaly and that's again when you get little kind of massive lumps of fluid that screw up everything but the point is we've got our skull and our ma and our different meninges and our ventricles which protect the central nervous system now let's get into the actual parts of the brain. So we've got the hindbrain. And the hindbrain is made up of three basic parts. We've got the cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla, or the medulla oblongata. So if we've got our brain here, the brainstem is this little this thing back here, and this thing that kind of leads down into the spine. Okay. So this guy here is the cerebellum. And normally when you see it, you see little lines. Here you see all these kind of big, you know, wrinkles. In the cerebellum, they're really fine and tiny because everything is more condensed. There are actually more neurons there. The cerebellum is involved in fine motor control, balance and muscle tone. So, for example, um, a guy with cerebral ataxia, which is a type of... Um, type of illness that can come from problems with the cerebellum, um, he can, the guy can put his hand out, but his fingers can't focus on any individual spot, and they're always kind of moving around, loss of fine motor control. Same when he's walking, there's this lack of balance. The pons is this little lump thing here, it's that bit there, and it uh, looks after kind of sleep and arousal, that's the connection to that. The medulla oblongata, or just the medulla, is this long bit here, and that's basically just like the the really important um, things for just life, like breathing, circulation, regulation, muscle tone, uh, in another sense. But really, it's all about um, those most essential life supporting functions. Okay, so remember the medulla oblongata, like the long word, is this one here. It's like the long bit, and the pons is this little kind of pons. It's like short and fat right there and the cerebellum is easy, it's like the, the bit behind. Basal, ga basal ganglia um, is basically a, a group of areas which all have kind of different functions, but basically it's all based around motor decisions and control and habit motive learning and volition. Um, kind of more relevantly, it's connected to Parkinson's because this thing called the substantia nigra, which is a part of the basal ganglia, um, produces dopamine, and when we see damage in the substantial nigra, nigra we see um, well, we see that in Parkinson's patients. So again, it's really important to study this bit and specifically um, when looking at Parkinson's later on. 
The limbic system is, is really interesting. It's made up of the, uh, a lot of things. Um, but the main two are the hippocampus and the amygdala. There's also the singular cortex and the mammary bodies and things like that. But these are the two big ones. Now, when you hear hippocampus, immediately the big word is memory. That's what you got to think. In really simplistic fashion, hippocampus, um, the function of hippocampus is memory, but it's not very black and white like that, as we'll see in a second. And amygdala, the big word for amygdala is emotion. All right? But, of course, it's more subtle than that. With hippocampus, it's really only explicit memory, which is events. It's more like a conscious memory. So um, remembering that time you rode a bicycle as opposed to implicit memory, which is the memory of riding, of the ability to ride a bicycle. So really important for that. So when that degenerates, we see Alzheimer's or the other way around. Basically, Alzheimer's patients have um, damaged hippocampi. In the amygdala, it, we say emotion, but it's really uh, mostly about fears, okay? Uh, it's the fear center. We see um, a lot of um, activation when we, we have subjects on the fMRI or something and we uh, scare them or something. It also has a lot to do with memory because emotion is really tied to it. And again, we'll see that later on in the emotions lecture. But basically, we've got the limbic system, in the hip, we've got the hippocampus and the amygdala, Emotion and memory, those are the kind of the big ones you have to remember. So, to sum up, we looked at the central nervous system, part one today. Um, we looked at the meninges and the ventricles, the hindbrain, which has um, the cerebellum, the pons and the medulla. The basal ganglia, which are connected to Parkinson's because of the substantia nigra, which produces dopamine. And the limbic system, which has the hippocampus and the amygdala, which are the centers for emotion and memory. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.